How gold is formed, gold minerals form in hot rocks and around volcanoes. Low sulfur, gold-bearing hydrothermal fluids form when hot rocks heat groundwater. An example of these low sulfur fluids is hot springs like those at Yellowstone National Park. The ores of Round Mountain, Nevada are typical low sulfur deposits. Gold is a chemical element easily recognized by its yellow metallic color. It is valuable because of its rarity, resistance to corrosion, electrical conductivity, malleability, ductility, and beauty. If you ask people where gold comes from, most will say you obtain it from a mine, pan for flakes in a stream, or extract it from seawater. However, the true origin of the element predates the formation of the Earth. Scientists believe all the gold on Earth formed in supernova and neutron star collisions that occurred before the solar system formed. In these events, gold formed during the Earth process. Gold sank to the Earth's core during the planet's formation. It's only accessible today because of asteroid bombardment. Theoretically, it's possible to form gold through the nuclear processes of fusion, fission, and radioactive decay. It's easiest for scientists to transmute gold by bombarding the heavier element mercury and producing gold via decay. Gold cannot be produced via chemistry or alchemy. Chemical reactions cannot change the number of protons within an atom. The proton number or atomic number defines an element's identity. Gold is the most malleable of all metals. It can be drawn into a wire of single atom width and then stretched considerably before it breaks. Such nanowires distort via formation, reorientation, and migration of dislocations and crystal twins without noticeable hardening. A single gram of gold can be beaten into a sheet of one square meter and an avoirdupois ounce into 300 square feet. Gold leaf can be beaten thin enough to become semi-transparent. The transmitted light appears greenish-blue because gold strongly reflects yellow and red. Such semi-transparent sheets also strongly reflect infrared light, making them useful as infrared, radiant heat, shields and visors of heat-resistant suits, and sun visors for spacesuits. Gold is a good conductor of heat and electricity. Whereas most metals are gray or silvery white, gold is slightly reddish-yellow. This color is determined by the frequency of plasma oscillations among the metal's valence electrons in the ultraviolet range for most metals, but in the visible range for gold due to relativistic effects affecting the orbitals around gold atoms. Similar effects impart a golden hue to metallic caesium. Common colored gold alloys include the distinctive 18-karat rose gold created by the addition of copper. Alloys containing palladium or nickel are also important in commercial jewelry as these produce white gold alloys. 14-karat gold copper alloy is nearly identical in color to certain bronze alloys, and both may be used to produce police and other badges. 14 and 18-karat gold alloys with silver alone appear greenish-yellow and are referred to as green gold. Blue gold can be made by alloying with iron and purple gold can be made by alloying with aluminium. Less commonly, the addition of manganese, indium, and other elements can produce more unusual colors of gold for various applications. Colloidal gold used by electron microscopists is red if the particles are small. Larger particles of colloidal gold are blue. While nuclear fusion within the sun makes many elements, the sun cannot synthesize gold. The considerable energy required to make gold only occurs when stars explode in a supernova or when neutron stars collide. Under these extreme conditions, heavy elements form via the rapid neutron capture process or R process. All of the gold found on Earth came from the debris of dead stars. As the Earth formed, heavy elements such as iron and gold sank toward the planet's core. If no other event had occurred, there would be no gold in the Earth's crust. But around 4 billion years ago, Earth was bombarded by asteroid impacts. These impacts stirred the deeper layers of the planet and forced some gold into the mantle and crust. Some gold may be found in rock ores. It occurs as flakes as the pure made of element and with silver in the natural alloy electrum. Erosion frees the gold from other minerals. Since gold is heavy, it sinks and accumulates in stream beds, alluvial deposits, and the ocean. Earthquakes play an important role as a shifting fault rapidly decompresses mineral-rich water. When the water vaporizes, veins of quartz and gold deposit onto rock surfaces. A similar process occurs within volcanoes. The amount of gold extracted from the Earth is a tiny fraction of its total mass. In 2016, the United States Geological Survey USGS, estimated that 5,726 million troy ounces or 196,000 320 U.S. tons have been produced since the dawn of civilization. About 85% of this gold remains in circulation. Because gold is so dense, 19.32 grams per cubic centimeter, it does not take up much space for its mass. If you melted all the gold mined to date, you wind up with a cube about 60 feet across. Okay guys, that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked the video, please like, share, and subscribe.
We'll see you at the next one.